Hello and welcome to this video looking at the PACE revision system. This is a system uh, that works across multiple subjects. It is mainly focused at A-level students, however the system itself can be used for GCSE as well. It's a simplified version of a lot of other revision strategies that are out there and it's not saying that this is the strategy However, it is a strategy that is effective and straightforward. So let's start off. As I said, this video is going to be looking mostly uh, at supporting A-level students. So it's important to understand the difference between GCSE and A-level. The skills that are required at GCSE are different to those at A-level. At GCSE, it is more about knowing the content and recalling it with some application and evaluation as well. So you can revise for your GCSEs by just revising content um, and the knowledge side of things. Whereas with A-level, it's much more about using and understanding the content to answer specific questions and um, taking the knowledge from multiple areas to answer the questions that you are given. So the style of revision that is required for A-level is more focused on application, evaluation and exam technique than just regurgitating the content that you have learnt. So it's important that you understand that because the strategies that would have got you by at GCSE will not work at A-level. Um, you may have been able to, to get away with getting good grades at GCSE by just revising for a few days or a few weeks before your exams. At A-level, that revision needs to be constant. So if you haven't started your revision, you need to, you need to get started pretty quick. And keep it going. Don't wait for an assessment to be coming up or an mock exam or all the actual exams to think oh actually yeah i need to revise this needs to be an ongoing planned part of your independent study the more you build it in the less stressed you will get when it comes to your actual exams and you do have to remember the content you need to learn for a level is immense it is not a quick activity that you can just kind of cram the night before and in actual fact cramming is one of the worst things you can do for your um, revision what cramming does is it overloads your brain so the system that we're going to look at the pace system is going to look at a way to to pace it out to strategize it so that you aren't overloading yourself the key key thing to remember here is it's good habits and routines that will create success if you're looking for shortcuts hacks or silver bullets there aren't any you cannot take shortcuts on this you have to learn the content and part of that comes from going to your lessons and doing everything you need to do whilst you're being taught but you have to be proactive for A-level, the amount of content is net, that's necessary for you to know means it has to be ongoing. Just because you finish a unit of work doesn't mean you can forget about it until the end of year 13. You need to keep going back and refreshing your knowledge on it. And as you can see from Kit Kat's face, he is not particularly happy with that piece of information. But good habits and routines will equal success. So let's look at some strategies then. So each subject will have slightly different requirements depending on its exam structure. You're gonna be looking at different skills if you're essay based compared to if you're more short answer based. If it is um, a synoptic type paper that they have in geography where you don't have prior knowledge or any idea really of what could come up in that paper. But your revision process should be the same. And to, before we get into PACE, there are two elements that you need to be aware of, and these are based in cognitive science and cognitive learning theory. These work. The first is being active in your vision, not passive. 
pa by passive, it's reading over notes, it's um, highlighting things, it's watching videos. Now, those things do have a place in your revision strategy, but overall, they are a byproduct of your revision strategy. They should be a small element of your revision strategy. So you need to make sure you are doing something. You are engaging your brain and you are building that bridge between your long term and short term memory. So it's easy to cross in the exam. Secondly, use a color system. Yes, we all like pretty and colorful notes and things like that. Use that to your favor. Use one color to show what you know, your memory and another color to show what came from notes. Now, this can also focus in your revision, because what that does is it shows you exactly what you know and what you don't know. But what it also does is it shows a way uh, it's a strategy for creating progress. Revision is one of those things that it is never ending. You could do all the revision under the sun that you want to do and still come out of the exam going, oh, I just wish I'd done a little bit more. So you need to show yourself that you are making progress and the color system is a good way of doing that because you can do the memory and notes um, it once. And then when you go back and do it again for that same topic, you can compare that first and second try through making it so you can see that you're knowing more, that you're recalling more. And that bridge between your long term and short term memory is getting stronger. So what how to pace your revision now um this particular um acronym came up with myself and a friend we both realized that we were talking about revision in the same way but we were using different language for it so we thought it would be a good idea to kind of come up with an acronym that could be a common language to revision in our school and this and this is where pace came from PACE stands for Plan, Audit, Check, Exam Practice. So it's four step revision. And this shouldn't this this kind of four steps is then broken down into three stages. Your first stage, the plan and prioritize. You do that in advance. Two to three days in advance, you plan out what you're going to be doing for your revision over the next couple of days. The audit and the check understanding, that's done in a combined revision session. And then your exam practice in a separate revision session. Now, this is this has a purpose. And the reason for that is that going back to my bridge analogy, you if you pour cement on the foundation of a bridge to keep that bridge solid, you need to wait for that cement to, to dry before you add more to it. Because if you just keep pouring cement into that foundation, it's going to overflow and it's going to run everywhere and it's not going to keep that bridge solid. So by having a break between your audit and your checking of your understanding and your exam practice, you're giving that cement time to to solidify and to um, harden. And you're allowing that bridge between your long term and short term memory to really strengthen. Because if you do it straight away, you're going to recall it. You're going to understand it. It's going to make sense because it's all in short term memory. But it's not going to be there in short term memory when you go into your exam. So let's break this down into exactly what each sex step means. So step 1A, let's call that, is planning. And by planning, it is extremely important to plan. Because that way you are focused and you are sticking to a routine. So according to cognitive load theory and cognitive science, 30 to 45 minute blocks is about as much as your brain can take. You could if you sit and do revision on one specific topic for four or five hours, three or four of those hours are going to be wasted because your brain is not going to take it in. At some point, it is going to go, mm, no, not happy, not doing any more. This is why you do the four, 30 to 45 minute blocks. So your audit and your check is one 40, 30 to 45 minute block, and your exam practice is another 45 minute block. 
it's also important to interleave your subjects. So we're not saying you do 45 minutes and then you take a three hour break. We're just saying that one task, one section takes about 40, 30 to 45 minutes. So by interleaving your subjects and topics, you are still moving forward with your revision and it makes sure that you are evenly spreading your revision. You're not focused just on one particular subject to the detriment of others. So it might be that you you plan in, you you plan out 45 minutes for each of your subjects then you take a break then you go back and do another 45 minutes on each of your three subjects added to that have a specific task that you can complete and cross off going back to that idea that revision is unthanking and it's hard to show progress there is something infinitely satisfying about crossing off a task on your revision list and or or any form of to do list. Now, I know I don't know about other people, but I put things on a to do list I've already done just for that satisfaction of crossing something off and looking like I've stepped forward. I'm making progress. So on the screen, you can see there is a suggestion of a way that you could set out a revision plan. So uh, just a, a box type planning document you can create on PowerPoint or on Excel or whatever. But you say what the time frame is. So 10 to 10, 45. What subject? Sociology. The task you're going to complete brain dump on domestic division of labor. OK, so it doesn't have to be massively detailed, but it's giving you a specific thing to achieve in that time frame. And that links into the next part, which is 1B, and that's prioritization. Not everything that you need to know for the exam needs to be studied in the same level of depth. There will be things that you know, that, you, that, you, that it's just clicked and you've just, you, it just stick. There will be other things that you keep going over and going over and going over, and it's not going to stay in as well. So you need to find ways of finding those areas. Um, so that way you and then when you're doing your interleaving, you can change it up between the areas of need, the things that you're not very confident in compared to those that you are more confident in. And again, this helps with that um, maintaining the, the flow of your revision, because when if you only ever focus on the things that you're not very good at, it gets really disheartening and you're more likely to just give up. If you focus on just the things that you know, yes, you, you're going to feel great. It's going to release the endorphins and you're going to feel fantastic. But if one of those other things come up, you're a little bit stuck. So there are a couple of ways that you can do this prioritization. And to, th these are the two that I recommend. You can either do it by exam question. So get a, a book of exa past exam papers, download these past exam papers or whatever and go through the paper and annotate them with red, amber, green. Red, couldn't answer this. Now bear in mind, if you are year 12, there will be content that you haven't yet covered. Amber, I could give it a go, but I don't think I'd do very well. And green, yep, got this, could get top band marks for this, I'm ready to go. The other way you can do it is by breakdown of topics. So um, you may have been given a checklist by your teachers. You might have a textbook. They've got chapter headings. However, you want to break down the course, but break it down into manageable chunks that you can then look at and kind of go, I don't know this. I don't think we've covered this. I have no notes on this whatsoever, in which case go to your teacher. I have notes, but I'm not confident. It needs revising. I'm OK and could do an exam question. It needs to be looked over, but not in a priority way i'm exam ready if this came up i it would be golden i would be really happy so that way you can kind of go take something from that bottom two and then do something from the top and then something from the bottom and then something from the top so that way you're kind of balancing out the oh god i don't know anything with the yay i've got this um feeling and brain activity then we move on to the audit. So the planning and the prioritization you do two or three days in advance because you never know what's going to happen in your life, what homework you're going to get set. Anything could come up when you move on to the audit and the check, which is one of those 40, 30 to 45 minute blocks. This is where your color system comes in. 
So the audit is about finding out what you know. What can you recall? What can you bring across that bridge from your long term and short term memory? And this is without notes. Now, what you can do is prior to doing the audit, you could take a glance at your notes, maybe look at a bite size video or um, audio podcasty type thing, but to just to kind of unlock the filing cabinet, so to speak. But this is to find out what you can already bring across that bridge from short term to long term memory. Now, there are lots of ways that this can be done. Mind mapping, having a summary sheet, using Cornell note pages, annotating an exam paper, flashcards, Freya flashcards. All of those are legitimate ways of doing your brain dump, your audit. Um, but it's important that you do it all in one color and you spend no more than about 15 minutes on it, thinking about our 30 to 45 minute block. OK, but it's literally get everything out of your head about that particular thing that you are revising. So to take my example of domestic division of labor, writing down everything you can remember. It doesn't have to be coherent. It doesn't have to be in sentences. Just brain dump it onto the piece of paper. When you've done that, that's when you go to the check. And this is where you go to your second color. So you add to that brain dump that whatever it is you've done, mind map, um, summary sheet, whatever, and fill in any gaps using textbooks, your notes, videos, your peers, your friends who are doing the same subject as you because they may get something you don't and vice versa. Websites, revision books. There is an absolute wealth of support and um, information on the Internet. You are lucky, perhaps isn't the right word, but post COVID where teachers were making videos to use for flipped and home learning, those are all still available. And you can go onto YouTube and find these videos um, and use them to support your learning. That's why teachers have put them out there on YouTube is to support learning. But this check again takes about 15, 20 minutes thinking about a 45 minute blocking um, and it is a way for you to see what it is you don't know or what it is that you need to, to, to go back over so it's easier to bring across the bridge. This is where you take another break. So this break should be around 12 hours next day ish 24 hours 12 hours you want to give it a really good length of time between your check and your exam practice to really let your brain settle in on that information and when you go on to doing this quiz yourself before you do your exam practice okay again it's unlocking that knowledge in your brain so you've given it 24 hours Give yourself a quiz just to kind of wake up that information. There's Seneca you can use, Carousel Learning, Quizlet, Get Revising. All of these websites have an online version, uh, quizzing system that you can use. Or alternatively, you could create your own crosswords. As part of your check, you could then turn that information into a crossword that you then go back to to fill in. Um, there's a number of websites that you can create these crosswords on. You could do a face to face kind of friendship group quiz where you create 10 questions each to see if, if you can then if they can then answer your questions and they can then uh, you can answer theirs. So there are lots of systems out there for quizzing, but the quizzing before the exam practice just reopens up that filing cabinet in your brain with the information in. The final stage then is exam practice, and this is essential. It is absolutely pointless being able to recall all the information that you've learned for the two years, but you can't actually answer the questions the way the exam board want it written. Now, a lot of subjects, just from talking to other teachers and talking to people, have said that the exam board is particularly um, specific about how they would like their questions answered to give to tell you how you're going to get marks 
So when this practicing of exam questions is essential. It's also for essential for timing. You need to time however long it is that you get per mark. Usually it's about a minute a mark. So for example, in sociology, we work at five, uh, six minute paragraphs. But answer, actually time yourself. If you don't finish in the time allowed, go back and finish it in a different color. Another way to show that you're making progress is to see that second color disappearing. With essay questions, my recommendation is always introduction and first paragraph rather than the whole essay. The reason for this is that if you're slightly off on your understanding of the question or what it is that you need to do, you don't want to waste the time writing out an entire essay to find that you've got it wrong or you've gone off on the wrong tangent. So just do your introduction first paragraph and that will be enough to show your teacher or whoever's looking at it for you that you you get it, you get what you need to do. Try marking it yourself as well. You use the assessment objectives to annotate, have I got all my assessment objectives that I need in this particular question? If so, where are they? With short answer questions, it's a little bit easier. Complete it, mark it, improve it. Okay, but this exam practice is absolutely essential to ensure that you are answering the questions the way the exam board want them. There is only so much exam practice we can do in class before it destroys everybody's will to live. So you need to make sure that you are answering it the way the exam board want to. And this is where the proactiveness comes in. Be proactive, practice those questions. So in summary, plan out your revision. Tasks and time, be specific, create good habits. Don't go around looking for shortcuts, they don't exist. There is no hack, there is no silver bullet to it. It's hard work and determination. Be active in what you do, be proactive in what you do. Prioritize and interleave. Make sure that you are covering all of your subjects equally, but you are jumping between them and you're jumping between what you're good at and what you're struggling with. And the most important thing is use your memory. Build that bridge between your long term and your short term memory. Make sure that it is solid, it's strong, its foundations are strong and you will be successful in your exams. I hope you have found this useful. There are more resources available on my website, hectic-teacher.co.uk, if you are looking for more resources.